guys, and thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Indiana Sports Connection, a victorious Colts episode. The Colts get to 5-5, five and five, beating the New England Patriots in Germany this morning, 10-6. to six. It was ugly. It's about what I expected to see. But the Patriots, they are about stinky as old garbage. And we're going to talk about everything that happened in this game. This is an instant reaction on Indiana Sports Connection. I am your residential anchor, Aaron. Subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. We talk about the Colts and the Indiana Hoosiers, who will be playing later on tonight. And also the women's basketball team plays at 5 o'clock today. So check that out. If you are finished watching the Colts as I am, check out the Hoosiers and the women's team playing uh, Stanford. So let's talk about what happened in this game. But first, let's thank our sponsor, Reynolds Wrap. For 75 years, Reynolds Wrap has provided Americans with durable aluminum foil that will help save you time in the kitchen. Make clean up a cinch. Make it faster with Reynolds Wrap. Wad this stuff up, throw it in the trash can, line sheet pans with it, use it for lids, use Reynolds Wrap for a bevy of different things. Reynolds Wrap for 75 years, providing great American aluminum foil to you at home and saving you time. Clean up in the kitchen. Get back to the game faster after halftime by using Reynolds Wrap. Thank you to Reynolds Wrap for sponsoring this video. So the Indianapolis Colts get a victory in Germany. It was an ugly, ugly game. The Patriots now move to two and eight on the season, two and eight or two and seven on the season, and they go into their bye week. And the Colts are five and five now and go into their bye week at 500. Looks like, I mean, the Colts can definitely still make the playoffs. That's just how bad their schedule is. We play teams coming down the stretch like the Steelers, the Falcons, uh, none of the good teams. So we have a chance to win all those games, but th this was a this was a game when you watched it. It looked like the Patriots and the Colts were just not trying to make big mistakes, and that's exactly what happened. Let's talk about Gardner Minshew. He scrambled around in this game and came up with a couple of really big plays. Probably the biggest play in the game was Josh Downs on third down. Right after the Patriots threw the interception where Mac Jones short arms a ball to Giuseppe in the end zone that was a automatic touchdown. He was wide open. He short arms and he throws an interception on about the three-yard line to um, Blackman. Catches the interception on the three-yard line and uh, Colts get the ball right there. On third down of that series, the Colts were about to punt the ball right back to the Patriots, which would have given them very good field position as well. But Minshew scrambles around, finds Downs on what is the play of the game. Downs, like, flat out dives for the ball, catches it. They get a first down. That really put the game at crunch time for the Patriots because they had to start using timeouts then. Really put them in bad position. Then... After that, the Colts did punt the ball on the final drive of the game after Mac Jones short-armed that ball. Then Bailey Zappi comes into the game. The last two series for the Patriots were, they were all out of sorts. Then Bailey Zappi, the Patriots had a chance to win it at the end. Bailey Zappi does a fake uh, spike and the... And then he throws an interception right after the fake spike and that was the end of the game. But what did you think about this game? Tell me what you thought in the comments down below. A win is a win. Bill Belichick, after the game, I'm watching his press conference. They're asking him, you know, is Mac Jones going to get benched? I'm going to tell you, Mac Jones is not better than Gardner Minshew. I mean, Minshew is a backup in this league, and I think we all know he's a backup from watching him this past few weeks. But Mac Jones is a backup, too. He he's, would not be a starter on any other team except for the Patriots. He looked awful in this game. He can't push the ball down the field. His very bad pocket awareness. And Dang Bo, three sacks in the first half. Really great of him. Um, you know, the Colts had, had four sacks total in the game on him. Something I do want to talk about is Shaq Leonard. 
Shaq Leonard in the first half, he cannot be out on the field. He can't run hard. He's easily just blocked up by people that get into his vicinity. And then uh, he when when players get like a running back comes up on him, they just juke and just go right around him. He has a problem firing off of his left foot. He just cannot stay out on the field. He can't be out there if he's going to operate. And it's very sad to watch. He is one of my favorite players. He is one of the best players that the Colts found in the draft a few years ago, about five years ago. But after these injuries, I just feel so bad watching him operate out there on the field because he just can't do it. He can't be out there. He can't tackle. He can't He can't make any of these things happen. And it's just a sad, sad situation. And I hate to see a lot of people in the comments were saying like, trade him and all this stuff. They're not going to trade his contract. He's making a lot of money. He already signed a new contract with the Colts. So they're going to have to cut him after this season. Um, that's a sad state of affairs for him as an individual, but it just is what it is. Uh, back surgeries and fusion surgeries, they're very unpredictable how you're going to recover from those surgeries. It's not like an ACL where it's just like, okay, give us some time, do the rehab, you'll come back 100%. This is a little different. This is where he's mentally trying to tell himself, like, uh, you know, fire off of that foot, get to that spot, and he just can't do it. And that's why it's just sad to see. You know, like many players have gone through these types of injuries. So sad to see Shaq Leonard in the in the way. And I also have seen people, like, saying, like, oh, he needs to change his name back. That has nothing to do with it. Maybe he did change his name because – he wanted to have a fresh start this season, but the rehab and everything, he's just not been able to make it out. Jonathan Taylor scored the game's lone touchdown in this game, but in many ways, Jonathan Taylor did not play one of his best games. Just seemed lackluster. There were many times in this game where I couldn't really tell. I'm going to rewatch the game, but they were bringing a lot of guys into the box. Um, after the first series, uh, Steichen went away from the run a little bit. Like second series was like pass, 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 and then a three and out, and pass, pass, pass again on on another series and three and out. So um, I know you gotta kind of mix it up a little bit. You can't run the ball with seven or eight guys in the box every time. But Jonathan Taylor, it seemed like his workload was a little light in this game. He still didn't go over a hundred yards. He had, let me bring these stats up. So, Jonathan Taylor, 23 carries for 69 yards and one touchdown. Not great. Uh, Zach Moss, for some reason, only had one carry um, carry for two yards in the game. Pittman, eight catches for 84 yards. Pittman had uh, just like a stellar day. Pittman has turned into really the best player on our offense Pittman and and Jonathan Taylor, but Pittman is about the most reliable guy. I'll tell you one really critical play in this game, the run back by McKenzie after they got the uh, field goal. When the Colts got the ball back, uh, McKenzie had a great run back, and they started out at like the 50-yard line. They only needed a little bit of some yardage to get the field goal under Matt Gay, and that stretched the lead back out to four right away, which made it where the Patriots had to score a touchdown. That field goal was critical. And then the Patriots missed a 35 yard field goal in this game. Them missing that field goal. Now Matt Gay did miss a long field goal at the end of the first half. It was like a 59 yarder he missed, but for the Colts to have that run back and get back ahead by four points was so, so critical. That changed everything in this game Going down, I mean, going down the field, the Patriots would have just needed a field goal to go ahead by one point, where instead they needed a touchdown late in the game. And that is really the obstacle of them having to score a touchdown was the main thing that put them in the position where they couldn't score a touchdown on the Colts in this game. They might have been able to get a field goal, but just I just want to point that out that like being ahead by four instead of one is so makes so many different makes the game play out in so much of a different way how 
the Patriots were going to have to play this game because the Patri- because the Colts were able to get that field goal and get back ahead by four. And these types of games, that can be, and especially when you're playing bad teams like the Panthers or the Patriots or the teams we have coming up, can be the difference between winning and losing. Whether or not you can hit some field goals and go ahead by like making a touchdown difference in the game can really be the difference in some of these teams we're going to play coming up. We got Atlanta. We got the Steelers. We got Tennessee who stinks. We got a lot of stinky teams coming up. So if we would need to make a blueprint on how to beat crappy teams, maybe that could be a part of it. Trying to think of some other plays in the game. Minshew, he got super like frenetic back there in the backfield a few times. He ran in places where it didn't look like he had to run. But overall in this game, I mean, he threw one interception. But overall, Minshew used his legs a little bit. I don't know what was going on with him there. He he seemed to be really trying to keep his knees up when he was running. Like, like don't fall down. Don't fall down. Don't fall down. Minshew sometimes looks like a baby crawling out onto like 7th Avenue in the middle of uh, tra- midday traffic or something like that. He just is like, like terrorized in so many different ways that he's going. And then you're like, whoa, just throw it out of bounds. And then, then he finds Josh Downs and you're like, whoa, how did he even do that? You know, but everything seems bad. Ever Everything seems bad sometimes when he starts moving too much. There gets to be too much going on. And then he just kind of gets in this... Uh, like he's in concrete or something. Like he just falls down. I mean, last week he had a player's like he ran towards the sideline, fell onto his butt, and then like threw the ball out of bounds. It's like, well, you could have done that from the pocket, you know, just throw it away. Get rid of it. Big win for the Colts. I don't want to sit here and complain about anything. The Colts, they lost their quarterback for the season next week. So Brents will probably be back. Uh, Juju Brents will be back in the secondary coming up and then I do want to point out Alec Pierce who had the other catch on a third down Minshew missile scramble and uh Minshew met up with Alec Pierce I think that was Pierce's only catch of the game but he did make a really good catch on that third down play I do want to point that out because I'm I'm always uh bashing on Pierce a lot so Mac Jones in the game 15 for 20 170 yards no touchdowns Bailey Zappi, three of seven. Stevenson had 20 carries for 88 yards for the Patriots. And Minchu 18 for 28, 194 yards. And well, we talked about Taylor's stats and Minchu's scrambling. But yeah, just, you know, this was one of those games. Um, yeah, uh, Pierce, that was one catch for 21 yards. That was his only catch. And it was one of the biggest plays of the game. Some of those situations where with the Colts offense now, if you can just stay out on the field for a couple more series and give your defense a little bit of a rest, we do have, as the Colts have to play complimentary football because they can't make mistakes. Any mistakes in this game they were going to lose, that was obvious. Any mistakes the Patriots made, which they did make, throwing the interception meant they were going to lose the game. And that's just how it played out. But big win for the Colts today. Yes, yes, yes. Indiana Hoosiers play Army this afternoon. And also the women's team plays at 5 o'clock against Stanford. I would check out the women's team. Indiana's women's team has really come on strong. And they have a chance to go really far in the tournament this year again. So check them out. And the men's team playing Army. This will be one where we can just see some of the players that really need to step it up and play a bigger role on this team. This is the game where they are going to have to find some confidence against Army because it's the worst team on the schedule all year is the the Hoosiers playing Army. And it's kind of bittersweet playing Army because Bob Knight did come from Army and he did die this week. And so just going to be kind of a kind of a weird game playing army and the army coach has a lot of Indiana ties as well. So um, yeah, just kind of look forward to seeing 
what he's doing there at Army, and then how some of these young guys for the Hoosiers, how they can step up in this game this afternoon. I'll be watching it this afternoon. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Indiana Sports Connection. If you like this content, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. We talk about the Indiana Hoosiers and the Indianapolis Colts on this channel all the time. So thank you for watch watching this instant reaction to the Colts. Patriots game in Germany today. The Colts get the victory. And until next time, stay classy out there, Colts fans.